everyone for joining us today. We appreciate you taking time to be with us. My name is Julia Ulrich. I am the Foundation Director here at Upland Hills Health. Uh, joining us today, we have Dr. Jared Leinbarger. Dr. Leinbarger has been a general surgeon for nearly 10 years, and he joined the Upland Hills Health team in 2019. In addition to being a general surgeon, he has specialty training in breast surgery and completed a fellowship in breast surgical oncology. Dr. Leinbarger, welcome, and thank you so much for being with us today. Good morning. Happy to be here. Good morning. So I know that as a general surgeon, you do much more than just breast surgery. But since, but, but since breast surgery is our topic today, I'd love for you to tell me a little bit more about what the breast health program looks like at Upland Hills Health. Uh, thanks for the question. I think it's a really comprehensive breast program. And I think it's, it's kind of uncommon to have such a comprehensive breast program at a rural community hospital. Um, clearly, Upland Hills has prioritized breast health and identify it as an important aspect of population health. And I think they provide some really valuable services to the community and I'm happy to be a part of that. Really the spectrum of breast health at Upland Hills spans um, all the way from screening and diagnosis to treatment and supportive care and survivorship. Um, I think the, the screening program is very strong. We use uh, 3D, uh, 3D mammograms, um, which uh, I think is going to be how all mammograms are done in the future, but Upland Hills was fairly early in adopting that technology. Um, that's more for the, the screening and diagnosis side of things, but I think where I come in more is in uh, the, the treatment side of things. And we do have a new piece of technology that I think we're gonna spend most of our time talking about today. Um, so I want to make sure that we focus most of our discussion on that, but um, really anyone who has any breast health question can give us a call because we do offer a wide range of services that, that uh, aren't just all about me. That's wonderful. So if somebody did have a question for you, Dr. Leinberger, or if they wanted to schedule an appointment, can they just give you a call at your clinic or do they need a referral? A uh, referral is not needed. Uh, people are welcome to call the clinic to schedule an appointment with a concern. I, I do encourage folks to keep their primary care providers in the loop. Most of our referrals do come through primary care providers and, and oftentimes through the screening process. We do like to catch things before they, before they even can become a concern through screening, but certainly if someone has a concern, we're happy to see them anytime. And the phone number that they can call is 608-930-7115. Perfect, thank you so much for providing that information. So you mentioned you have a new piece of technology. I believe that's called Savvy Scout. Um, so tell me a little bit about what Savvy Scout is. I, I do have some slides I can share. I think this is a case where a picture is worth a thousand words, but I also have a live demo that'll even bring it more home. I'm gonna start with this screen share though. Let me know when you can see my slides here. Okay, will do. How's that? Um, I, it looks like it's loading here. Yep, there we go, we've got it. Okay. This is, my, this is my title slide so everybody can know what we're talking about. Localized breast excisions at Upland Hills Health. Um, there's a couple of words in there that I just wanna clarify. Um, excision means we're removing part of the breast tissue. And this can be either for treatment or sometimes for diagnosis. Um, the localized part refers to the fact that oftentimes we just need to remove a small amount of breast tissue and knowing exactly where in the breast to remove that tissue is very important. And so when we do an excision and we only wanna remove part of the breast tissue, we wanna make sure we are removing exactly the area that needs to be removed. So it's really just a way of finding that area that you need to remove. Exactly. Okay. Just for some historical perspective, um, in the past, these excisions were performed using a wire localization. This is different than the type of localization that we're gonna talk about today. The wire localizations did serve the purpose of helping us find the area to be removed, but they had some drawbacks that ultimately led us to move away from the wire localizations. Can you see my cursor pointing to the wire here? Yep, we can see that. 
well, you can appreciate that the wire is a, a long, thin uh, piece of metal. It has a little barb on the end that acts to point right to the area that needs to be removed. In this case, this little spot right here um, is right at the area that needs to be removed. This wire travels a long distance starting here through the breast tissue, but also starting here, it extends out of the breast tissue. So a portion of the, that long wire is in the breast tissue, traveling through the breast tissue, and a portion is outside the breast tissue. So Dr. Some of the Dr. downside, go ahead. The, the portion that's outside of the breast tissue, is that uncomfortable for women? Well, some of the downsides that we experienced in taking care of patients with these wires is that the portion of the wire that's outside the breast can get bumped and that can be painful if that gets bumped. Um, it can also inadvertently be pulled back and that can cause the tip of the wire to be dislodged from the area that it's intended to be at. And that can complicate finding the area that needs to be removed in the operating room. For example, if this tip gets pulled back to here, then it's no longer marking this area here that needs to be removed. Some of the other downsides that we saw with these wire localized procedures was that they had to be performed on the day of the procedure. So people had to come in early in the morning and their first visit was typically over to the radiology department to have this wire placed. And then they would go back to the pre-op area and wait for their turn in surgery, which could never be the first surgery of the day um, because they had to have the wire placed first. And so they would often be waiting around. We do our best to estimate when we think the surgery will happen, but um, sometimes delays would happen waiting in line. So it ended up being a long day in general for folks who would come in to have essentially um, a very short surgical procedure, but it would take the majority of the day to have that done. And when, when we're not letting you eat all day because we're planning a surgical procedure, that can feel even longer. Yeah, I imagine it would feel pretty long. Once we removed an area using the wire localization, we would take an x-ray of it to make sure that we removed the area that we intended to remove. This is the x-ray from the excision performed on that last case. And you can see this area that was intended to be removed is just beyond the tip of this wire. So fortunately, the targeted area was removed in this case, but you can see that in the course of perhaps transport, but sometime between placement and getting this area removed, the wire did get slightly dislodged, but fortunately in this case, everything worked out okay. All of that led us to, to think of a different way to do this. And we're pretty happy with the device that we ultimately settled on. We had looked at a lot of different types of technology and I've had experience with different types of technology, but the Savvy Scout is a new technology um, at Upland Hills. And it was a new technology for me, although very similar to other things that I had used just with some unique advantages that made us choose this over others. Um, this is a wireless device, um, meaning you don't have a long piece of metal sticking out of the breast or a long piece of metal traveling through the breast tissue. This is the device right here that gets implanted into the breast. Um, it's about the size of a grain of rice and um, once it's in the breast, it can't be felt, it can't be seen, and it's actually FDA approved to remain in the breast tissue indefinitely if for some reason after it's placed, um, someone would decide not to have it removed. Um, there's no radiation at all associated with this little device that's implanted in the breast tissue. And it's very precise in its localization, meaning I can know exactly where the area is to be removed within about one millimeter of, of distance. Okay, so like that, have, last, that last photo that you showed us, there was quite a bit of, of tissue around that wire. So this being a, a little bit more precise, like you mentioned, um, would there have been less tissue that would have need to be removed? That's one of the big benefits of this device is being so precise, it does allow for a more 
precise excision, meaning a smaller amount of tissue can often be removed, just enough to serve the purpose. Um, if all we need is to clarify a diagnosis, then we really don't need to remove a lot of extra breast tissue. And the less we can remove means the less soreness, the less change to the breast and a quicker recovery. That's, that's really nice. Um, like I said, I do have a demonstration that I'll show you just to, to bring it home a little bit more clearly, but I did want to just point out, this is the machine here that detects this device. Once this is placed in the breast tissue, this probe is pointed at the breast. And this screen here tells me exactly how far in terms of millimeters this probe is from the area to be removed. And this can be used in real time while performing the procedure. This can be approached from really any angle. So anywhere on the breast where it's more discreet to hide an incision or where an incision might be more cosmetic once it's healed, um, the incision can be made in that location and still know exactly where the area to be removed is. In this instance, that reflector, we call it, is right inside the area to be removed. Um, and this is an example of what the excision looks like um, following removal. So the x-ray this time shows this reflector right here that marked the area to be removed right in the center of what was removed and a very thin amount of tissue symmetrically around that reflector with this little dot here marking the area to be removed. So I have a quick question. On your last slide that you were on, I saw that it said MRI compatible, but you referred to this as being a reflector. So um, does that, if, if in the situation that a woman had to, that the, the reflector was left inside of the breast, would that cause any sort of disturbance in the MRI images at all? Really this, I, I, did, I did put on there that it's compatible with MRI, but really this reflector is compatible with any type of breast imaging. Um, the reflector basically um, is a term that we use to, um, to describe how the, how the machine actually works. It sends a sound wave uh, through oh. the breast tissue that then bounces off of this reflector. Um, and that, that radio wave is sent back to the probe um, that then tells based on the signal that it receives how far away the reflector is from the signal that's being sent to it and reflected back. Okay, so this, the so reflector it's, itself doesn't have like any shadows or anything like that on the images. It doesn't, and with some of the other devices that, that might be implanted into breast tissue, um, doing, for example, an MRI can, can cast up to a, a two centimeter or almost a one inch shadow around the device that's implanted. Sometimes these devices are implanted into breast cancers, and sometimes it's important to follow response to therapy using MRIs. Um, the example that I can provide is that some women who have a breast cancer might be treated first with chemotherapy instead of surgery. And we might use an MRI to follow how the cancer is responding to the chemotherapy. Some women have a really good response and that can help us do less surgery, maybe a smaller excision, but we need to be able to know that the, the treatment is working and we need to be able to know um, what type of surgery we can plan to do by following with MRI. And I think one huge benefit to this technology is that it is compatible, especially with MRI, but really all types of breast imaging. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to tell you a secret. I'm, I'm kind of interested to see what that machine does. Are we at a point where uh, you're about ready for your live demonstration? I'm curious. So I have a couple, can you see me now? Yes. Okay, I have a couple of reflectors in this model here. Are you able to see those reflectors? There's one here and one right over here. Yep, yep. Can you turn it um, so I can see the top of it? 
All right, yep, that makes it a little bit easier to see those. They're, they're pretty small, you can see. This, this is about the size of the palm of my hand, and mm -hmm. you can see how small those reflectors are in there. Yeah. And this is the machine behind me that we use to detect them. Here's the, the wand that sends the, the radio signal and the screen behind me that tells me how far away it is. There's one other thing that I couldn't really show in the slideshow, but it does make a sound as well. Okay. And the closer I get to the reflector, the louder the sound gets. So I don't have to constantly be looking at the screen, but if you can see the screen behind me, as I, as I point to the reflector, you can see it tells me how far away so I can know when to start removing the tissue and when I've taken enough. So I can approach it from any angle and it can tell me in three dimensions how far away I am. And so I can do a very well-centered excision, a very precise excision um, based on the real-time feedback that I get in the operating room. Yeah, that seems, I love that it has both the visual and the audible. That seems like it would be really helpful for you during surgery. I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint here. Let me know when you see my screen again. Okay. All right, we have it. Okay. So this is, this is um, an example of a reflector that's actually placed in the breast tissue. And this is the area to be removed. And again, you can appreciate that this is a small reflector within the breast tissue. Um, these other spots here, these are just normal calcium deposits that are, that are typical in breast tissue. And this spot here is the biopsy clip that was placed at the time of the initial biopsy. This person actually had a breast cancer and this little marker here was placed at the time of, of the initial biopsy that diagnosed the cancer. And so this patient had a breast cancer surgery that was performed using this technology to really help remove as small of an amount of breast tissue as possible. Um, because I couldn't feel this area. I didn't know exactly where it was in the breast tissue until this reflector was in there. And the picture that I showed you previously, this, this is actually a lumpectomy for a breast cancer. So in terms of what this patient received in terms of her breast cancer surgery, this was all of the tissue that ended up being removed from the breast to treat her breast cancer. Of course, there's other treatments involved, there's other aspects to the care, but um, I think to have a very precise excision um, and remove exactly the amount of tissue that needed to be removed, the entire breast cancer was contained within this small amount of tissue that was removed here and this person had a very nice cosmetic result with a very quick recovery afterwards and was able to move on to um, next steps in treatment very quickly. Yeah. And I do, I do feel that this was really largely enabled by the type of localization that we were able to perform here. Sure. So I know, Dr. Lamberger, I know you've worked in uh, larger organizations in the past and you have a lot of experience with breast health surgery techniques. So what are your thoughts on Upland Hills Health offering, offering this level of technique at a community hospital? I, I do think it's uncommon. I think we're very fortunate to have acquired this, this technology. Um, it does uh, speak to the, the commitment to breast health, not only in the administration, but also in the community. Um, I do understand that this, this machine was purchased with, with help from some community support as well, and we're very grateful for that. Um, I think there's a lot of things that we offer at Upland Hills that are uncommon to be offered at a rural community hospital. Um, I would say um, 
having options for reconstruction, having a plastic surgeon available to help and coordinate uh, cosmetic reconstructions with certain procedures in the operating room is an uncommon thing at a rural community hospital. Um, our ability to perform diagnostic services like MRIs and um, precise biopsies for diagnosis and as well our ability to collaborate with, with some local providers as well. We're geographically very well positioned to be able to collaborate with providers from Madison who actually will provide medical oncology services on site. Um, we have really a lot of supportive services available as well that I think just go above and beyond the ability to collaborate through telehealth for genetic counseling, social services, um, lymphedema therapy and physical therapy for people who might need that afterwards. So I think a lot of what we have here is, is uncommon and really takes our breast health program to the next level. And it's very nice to have it a community hospital because breast health is a very important part of community health. Yeah, it absolutely is. Well, thank you, Dr. Lionbarger, for sharing this information with us. It's it's clear that Savvy Scout has been a real benefit to Upland Hills Health and a great addition. So um, we're already seeing the positive impact uh, for the women in our community. Uh, before we sign off, I do wanna take a moment to recognize and thank both the hospital and the foundation board members for their commitment to healthcare in our community. Their decision to invest in new technology, they're very passionate about making sure that our uh, the healthcare that we deliver here is just the best that it can be. So their investment in this new technology and other technology that we've recently um, implemented here at Uplands is just you know to be commended. So and as you mentioned, this this machine itself, this technology with Savvy Scout was also um, in large part due to some generous donations that we received from community members. Um, I'm going to shout out Frank Halata with Halata Auto Group. He was very instrumental in. Um, allowing us to bring this equipment to Upland Hills Health. So it's, you know, as a rural nonprofit hospital, we rely on the support of our community members and the Savvy Scout machine is just one way that um, their support can help make things better at Upland Hills Health for our community. So uh, thank you again, Dr. Leinbarger. We appreciate you taking time with us today and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. And um, just as a reminder, I think folks are able to uh, send questions, and if not, uh, they can also, again, give us a call, 608-930-7115 with any questions. Yep, and if they do have questions, they can uh, email those to info at uplandhillshealth.org. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.